a lot less stuff here than before. It's good to see you all here in one piece. I know you must have a lot of questions, but let Koichi check you over first. It's best not to let any lingering effects of the Abyss go untreated. Thank goodness you made it back. I came here as soon as the Pyro Archon told me about your plan. Take a seat, everybody. I'll examine you one by one. All right, that should do it for now. But just to be safe, I'll perform another checkup in a couple of days. I have to say, though, I've never seen anyone react to the Abyss like you, Traveler. It's like you're completely immune to its power. He always has been special like that. He can even purify its power. Wait, now that you mention it, Paimon doesn't think she's affected either. Given the current situation, that ability will likely play a great role in the events to come. Of course. I still have patience to see, so I'll head out. Thank you, Koichi. All right, all right. We might not see eye to eye, but we both had good intentions. Just give it time. I'm sure we'll figure things out between us one day. Yeah. All right. There's so much to discuss, I don't even know where to begin. You've seen it for yourselves now. The devastation in the Night Kingdom. I'll get straight to the point. Natlan is on the verge of destruction. It's very possible our nation has less than a year before total devastation. Huh? N no. Th that can't be true, can it? That's right. But I've only ever disclosed that fact to the handful of people working with me to save this nation. Our looming destruction is not a recent development, but the inevitable conclusion of the disaster the Abyss initiated 500 years ago. Mulani told us a little bit about that. 500 years ago, all the nations of Tavat were invaded by the Abyss. Unlike the other nations, Natlan never had stable and deep-rooted ley lines, so we suffered the worst of the invasion. The battle against the Abyss was exceedingly long and brutal. In the end, victory came at the cost of our civilization and countless lives. Even then, it took centuries of solving the disasters caused by the Abyss to finally achieve the peace we know today. And still, this is but a superficial victory. The forces of the Abyss have merely been driven back underground. Their threat to Natlan remains as real as ever. I... I'd never have guessed. The problems plaguing the Night Kingdom are all the more complicated because that realm is essentially functioning as Natlan's ley lines. Immediately after the war, our calculations estimated that we would have a maximum of 500 years before the Night Kingdom was completely lost to the Abyss. But at that time, we were a nation of the destitute. Our people no longer believed in victory, nor did they hold hope for the future. Our civilization was dying, our faith crumbling, and the line of power passed down from the Wyab nearly severed. If we didn't bring the nation back together, it would be foolish to even dream of defeating the Abyss in the future. So, the Archon had a long and involved discussion with the heroes of each tribe, and finally came up with a 500-year-long plan to save Natlan. So that's what happened. After finding Kachina, I encountered a strange figure who gave me a series of new memories. Since the plan was mentioned in those memories, I guess I've been chosen to play an important role in it. But there's still something I don't understand. Those memories showed me the Pyro Archon from back then. And it was you. Huh? But that doesn't make any sense! The Pyro Archon is supposed to be human! It's impossible for a human to live that long! That's right. The hardest thing for humans to overcome has always been time. Or rather, the natural limitations of our lifespan. A god can extend a human's life by using a certain amount of divine power, or subjecting them to a curse. But, as we all know, 
Natlan doesn't have gods like that. We can only rely on our own methods. A human life is like a flame destined to be extinguished. 500 years ago, I placed my life within the sacred flame. Only by dying before my time could I have the chance to wake up again. So, in other words, this is your second life? Yes. We only managed to defeat the Abyss all those years ago because the tribes came together as one. If the Natlan of the future was to have a fighting chance, the Pyro Archons that came after the war had to rebuild the decimated tribes. The goal was to reunite the people and restore the strength of each tribe's Wyab. Once a tribe was back to its full strength, the tribe's Wyab would select a hero, indicating the tribe was once again ready for war. The Chosen would then stand by my side in defense of our nation, just like great heroes of old 500 years ago. So that means I'm one of the Chosen? That's right. You bear the ancient name Umoja, the same one held by the hero from your tribe 500 years ago. It means unity. After your adventure in the Night Kingdom, I trust you've come to fully understand the meaning of that name. So, in other words, you always knew who the Wyab were going to pick from each tribe? Yes. According to the plan, each tribe was supposed to have been fully restored by the time I awoke. But something went wrong along the way. The six heroes successfully inherited the ancient names from 500 years ago, but the intel regarding the plan wasn't passed on to them. Once again, it comes down to the deterioration of the Night Kingdom. Communication between the Sacred Flame and the Wyab has been blocked. Just like how the Ode of Resurrection failed to bring Kachina back. Exactly. It's just another tactic the Abyss is using against us. The Abyss may not possess intelligence, but its methods certainly aren't easy to counter. If we want to unblock that information from being passed on, my presence alone isn't enough. The ancient name bearer must establish a greater connection to their name. So, I've tried my best to help them from the sidelines. Currently, Shalonin of the Children of Echoes, Kinich of the Scions of the Canopy, and Iansan of the Collective of Plenty have all been acknowledged by their names. During your adventure, you too earned the acknowledgement of your Wyab Mu'alani. In the process, you gained the memories stored within your name. But we have less than a year! Yes, but we have no choice. We cannot start the plan until all the heroes have been gathered. That's also why I haven't been able to take action despite the urgency of the situation. But if you knew this whole time, why didn't you just tell me about my role in all this? Wouldn't that make everything go a lot faster? Perhaps, but the opposite could also be true. Knowing your destiny too early could mean failing to realize your full potential. Just like your determination to save Kachina, I hope your commitment to this endeavor comes from your own strength of will, rather than a sense of obligation. So I suppose you're not going to tell us who the final two heroes are then? That's right. Their time is yet to come. Putting pressure on them beforehand will only hinder their development. I can only trust in the judgment of the Wyab. I have never believed I could solve this crisis alone. In fact, it was precisely because I chose to trust and rely on others that we managed to get this far. Natlan's salvation lies not in its Archon or any singular individual, but in us all. You're quite perceptive, aren't you? <sighs> I thought I might get away with avoiding the topic. Huh? Oh, right! All the stuff you stored here before, where did it all go? Even though I sacrificed my power, I still needed a contingency plan to ensure you would make it back from the Night Kingdom. After all, I was the one who allowed you to take that risk, and Mu'alani has an important role to play in my plan. In addition to their sentimental value, the items I stored here held a much more important purpose. Fuel. Fuel? Oh, so back then, that's why you... Yes. The stories embodied by those items are certainly important, but there's an even more significant trait they all share. Every item belonged to a hero of Natlan. Over time, they became imbued with a certain amount of contending fire from being carried in battle. 
On their own, each item's power is limited, but together their combined effect can prove quite useful in a dire situation. By burning those items, I was able to activate the contending fire stored within them to open the boundary between the two worlds. It was a rather crude approach, so all their power was depleted in an instant, as you can see. But aren't they all precious treasures? What about their stories? <sighs> That's exactly why I dragged you all here. No matter what, I never wanted the Pyro Archon to have to use that power. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. You all deserve my thanks, actually. If you hadn't saved the totem pole, that area of the Night Kingdom would have been forever lost to the Abyss. And then, it would only be a matter of time before the Children of Echoes was met with disaster. Besides, when those heroes entrusted their belongings to me, or the Pyro Archon of their time, it was out of a desire to contribute to Natlan's survival. If they knew those items helped save the present-day heroes of Natlan, they would not mourn their loss. Even when you put it that way, I still feel bad. <laughs> There's no need. Remember what I told you about time? The people and the events of the past are never truly lost to us. We simply carry them with us in a different form. In that sense, we didn't lose anything at all. If you still have regrets, let them fuel your resolve in the battles to come. Your deeds will become new legends and nurture new forms of power just like the items once stored here. Well, we'd still like to return the favor. <laughs> well, if that's the case, just treat me to a drink sometime. Now that Kachina has returned, we can finally hold the victory feast and celebrate your team's triumph in the Night Warden Wars. And we could all use the rest, that's for sure. Plus, you'll be able to silence everyone who doubted you once and for all, Kachina. <sighs> Still, now that I know the danger we're facing, having a victory feast doesn't feel right. Try not to let it get to you. It's important to stay calm. Worrying about it will only affect your judgment. All right, you should head out. I'll join you in a bit. When I was young, I used to sit by the hot springs and listen to the stories of warriors from all over Natlin. They attract people from all walks of life. Friends come easy here, no matter what tribe you're from. The people of the springs have never claimed the hot springs as their own private property. They are there to bring all hot spring buddies together. It's been really nice seeing the children of my tribe get older. It's helped me gradually understand the true value of the springs. I've witnessed their energy, their determination, their absolute passion for life. Ah, even when they cause trouble, I never manage to hold on to my anger for long. It's unbelievable how quickly they worm their way back into my good graces. I'm certain Mualani will become a great warrior when she grows up. She possesses infinite potential. I can see it. One day, when I'm no longer in fighting form, I'll come here and tell stories to all the children, just like those warriors did for me. So, you better get busy, Pyro Archon, or I'll end up running out of stories. <laughs>
Our nation is engulfed in darkness. Our tribes stand divided. And yet you promise victory in the distant future. The Abyss is a cunning enemy. One that I faced in battle many times. Were that not the case, I would never understand exercising this degree of caution. My rage will never know absolution, and my power will no longer aid you in victory. But you came to me because you knew you could convince me with just a single sentence. I understand your choice. The heroes of today will forge the path ahead with blood and fire. Just remember to earn us the victory we are owed. Otherwise, rest assured, I'll find a way to collect the debt. For Natlan. So, you're gonna head 500 years in the future to serve as the Pyro Archon again? But what about the you from right now? You're just gonna die? You can't ask her those questions and expect her to answer, my dear. The decision is hers to make, and she deserves our support. We will do everything we can to rebuild the tribes. Don't you worry. Even across time, we will all do our part to fight for Natlan's future. Yeah, Mom's right. We'll always believe in you, sis. Oh, seriously though, Dad should be here. Where is he? I... I imagine he... He didn't know what to say, so he chose not to come at all. Don't take it to heart, my dear. That's just who he is. Just remember, no matter what happens in the future, we will always love you. One day. I know I can't live that long, but I'll think of something. Oh, there has to be a way for us to meet again one day. If there's an answer out there somewhere, I'm gonna find it. So, don't forget about me. If that's your decision, then you have my full support, Archon. May our children live to see such a lovely son. For Nadlan! No one fights alone. The rules are my legacy. They shall grant us the strength to overcome the next tragedy. War forged the six tribes, taught us how to fight, instilled in us what it means to love. Who will be the one to bring this to an end? We are the inheritors of memory and legend. Those who grew alongside sun and wind. Those who forged our own destiny and future. That is Natlan's fire. The lifeblood of our nation.
No, I, I knew Chaska would be here, so I just came to deliver some medicine. I was about to leave, actually. But, uh, it's not that I don't want to celebrate Kachina and the others. I'm so glad she made it back. It's just... Well, I'll make things awkward if I'm around my sister right now. Ah, well, you two had a fight, so Paimon can understand. She didn't cause any trouble during your trip, right? Yeah, she was super helpful. She gave us a lot of useful information about the Abyss. That's good. That's all I needed to know. Is there a reason you asked? You were pretty outspoken when we first met, but now it's like you're holding something back. Uh, maybe it seemed unreasonable, picking that fight with her before you left, but I did it for a reason. Her impulse to fight is extremely strong. Her mental strength helps her rein it in, but she still loses control sometimes. I had no idea what you might face in the Night Kingdom, so I didn't want to take any chances. So, what you're saying is... Okay, so maybe it sounds a little stupid. But it works pretty well. It helps her keep her cool for a little while, at least. Anyway, I'm just glad you were able to make it back safe and sound. That's all I wanted. What? Do you really have to go that far? Can't you just talk it out? No way. Chaska never opens up about her own pain, especially to her family. She can't learn about this, or it'll be even harder to help her. I appreciate the understanding, and don't worry. I'll find a way to help her ease this burden. Anyway, I need to get going. Enjoy the celebration! Oh, and if you ever need a doctor, you know who to find! Huh. Who would have thought there was a deeper reason behind their arguing? In the end, it's all the Abyss's fault! Paimon's had enough of them! <laughs> Let's give a huge round of applause to our brave young warrior, Kachina! Well done, Kachina! <laughs> Thank you, everyone! I'm so glad I finally made it! I always knew you could do it! With so much potential at your age, you have a great future ahead of you! You're one to talk. Don't think I didn't know you were the first person to abandon your team. I'll be dealing with you when we get back. I, I had no choice! My friend invited me, I couldn't just say no! Oh, really? So you weren't just trying to get ahead in the first round? I wasn't, I swear. I just happened to find that bearer injured in the wild, so I stopped to bandage his wounds. When he insisted on repaying the favor, what was I supposed to do? I'm just one person. I figured Kachina would have no trouble replacing me. But the fact of the matter is that after your departure, everyone else started thinking about swapping teams too. I'm really sorry, Kachina. It was wrong of us to abandon you like that. It's amazing that you still made it all the way through to the Night Warden Wars. That's the highest honor. So, uh, what about you guys? Did you make it far? Um... Our team captain drank too much the night before the competition and turned up late to the stadium on the day. We got disqualified. <laughs> Serves you all right. No sympathy for me. All right, all right. There's no need to be like that, Uncle Pakal. Um, dear friends, I'd like to say a few words. Firstly, I'm grateful to my friends and our great Archon for helping to bring me back. This Traveler and his companion Paimon are some of the strongest people I've ever met. If they were allowed to participate in the pilgrimage, I have no doubt that they'd win the whole thing. They've agreed to let me learn from them. With their help, I believe I can become even stronger still. And let's not forget my good friends, Moalani, Chaska, Kanich, and Ayansan. They all helped the Traveler and Paimon figure out a way to bring me back from the Night Kingdom. They too deserve to be called our heroes. So, please give another round of 
applause for them. Thank you so much. Well said. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> How does it feel being a hero, Kachina? To be honest, it's a bit overwhelming. It all just feels so surreal. Well, you better get used to it. Next up, undefeated champion! Hey, please don't make fun of me. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're here. Have some fruit juice. I got it specially for you two. How did you know? That's my mom's favorite! You look like you've still got questions. Ask away. Because they had their own lives to live. The thought of telling them, abandon your families and everyone you love, and come with me to the end of time. For in 500 years, Natlan will be destroyed. It seemed too cruel. You could just as easily point out that everything in this world would come to an end eventually. But life is short. And beyond a point, it just doesn't seem real. Imagine if I said, Let's leave right now, and go save the sun because it'll flame out in a few million years. It would sound quite ridiculous. I couldn't make them shoulder that burden with me. Besides, every generation will have its heroes, this one included. The plan could still work without them. Or, of course, without me. But since I was the one who came up with the plan, I felt duty-bound to see it through to the end. Suddenly remembering that portrait in your room. Was that your family from back then? Yes, it was. So when you asked me who my sister grew up to be, the truth is that very little information survives. From what I've been able to piece together, I can conclude with a reasonable degree of confidence that she ended up as an architect and artist. She played an instrumental role in rebuilding the scions of the Canopy tribe, designing and building many houses. But of course, um, none of her buildings are around anymore. Still, it was an impressive achievement, and I'm very proud of her. You feel lost keenly. It seems to stir up feelings of regret in you. But this is something I have long since come to terms with. This is a war, and there can be no war without loss. I am already far more fortunate than those who lost their lives to the Abyss. The people of Natlan look to me as their Archon, and the weight of their expectations is mine to bear. I must see our fate through to the very end, no matter what I may find there. Yeah, doesn't that mean the way everything ends has already been written, including your plan? I suppose, but so what? Don't forget time takes many forms. The past, present, and future coexist, and all are equally important. Even if the future ends in destruction, there's still no reason to give up on the here and now. And it's precisely because we humans cannot know our fate that we will never give up on our struggle. This is a pivotal moment. We are still two heroes short. Well, three to be precise. There's one further hero who I'm hoping to get on my side, whatever it takes. Your resistance to the corrupting power of the Abyss is truly remarkable. It would easily make you an all-important figure in the upcoming battle. If you agree to join us, you will not only gain my full support in your journey, but I will also forge a brand new ancient name for you. Ancient names can be forged? They can. Several strict conditions must be met, but if they couldn't be forged at all, then the number of them in circulation would have long dwindled to zero. Possessing an ancient name would mean that your adventures in Natlan are recorded in full. Your stories would be remembered by our people for all the years to come. The Ode of Resurrection may have temporarily lost its power, but still. Take this as my personal guarantee that I shall never let you fall. Just like in the Night Kingdom, I will be there for you. That is a promise I will fulfill at all costs. This nation always honors its heroes. Yeah, we can't just ignore the situation here. Wonderful. 
Then I'll reach out to Shilonen right away. She's the one who will forge the name. We've never forged an ancient name for an outlander before, but I trust she'll find a way. My lord, we've received word that the Pyro Archon has lost much of her power. Although your injury complicates things, this is most certainly the opportune time to seize the Gnosis. Victory and defeat are rules, not outcomes. I have never taken advantage of an opponent in a time of weakness, and I don't intend to start now. As for you, I must confess, I did not expect that little trick of yours to save the day. No matter how dense the fog, as long as the sun remains, we cannot turn day into night. She could have dispelled it. She simply chose not to. <sighs> you don't have much time, and you're injured on top of that. What do you plan to do next? I'm beginning to see just how useful you may turn out to be. You heard something from here, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs>